Now, more than ever, long-term concessional financing is vital. As many Africans and other developing nations face severe debt crisis, this financial strain hampers our efforts to combat climate change, transition to low carbon economy, and adequately fund essential sectors like education, health, and social protection. We have frequently discussed the financial challenges that restrict our economic capabilities and reduce our investment in resilience and growth. High interest rates lead to unsustainable sovereign debt, complicate refinancing, and destabilize our currencies. Additionally, the rising cost of living, increased commodity prices, and supply chain disruptions severely impacting our food security, healthcare systems, and overall preparedness for response to crisis. Last year, we brought to global attention that African nations pay interest rates up to five times higher than typical World Bank IBRD rates. This year, the situation has worsened. Developing countries are now net contributors to the global economy, contrary to expectations of receiving net inflows. Projections, for example, for 2024 show a net outflow of US dollars 74 billion from IDA countries like Kenya and others to donor nations, while net financial transfers to developing countries have plummeted from US dollars to 25 billion in 2024 to now a low of US dollars 51 billion in 2022. Those statistics are glaring by any measure. Given these conditions, sustainable growth remains elusive for African nations as we allocate more funds to debt service than to crucial sectors like education, health, and social protection. By investing in IDA, we unlock 60% of the world's arable, uncultivated land for food security and nutrition, not just for Africa, but for the globe. By investing in IDA, we unlock the human resource potential in our continent, Africa being the youngest continent in the world, investing in education, in health, in uh, social protection, gives us the opportunity to provide 40% of the world's workforce by 2050. Investing in, I, in, in IDA gives us the opportunity to decarbonize global economy and provide for green growth. Let me say this. Our continent possesses 60% of the world's prime solar resources and our untapped renewable energy potential exceeds 50 times the projected global electricity demand by 2040. However, realizing this requires a shift in investment strategies with affordable long-term capital at scale being central. Our proposal and request entail a vision for Africa, driven, an Africa-driven socioeconomic development executed with transparency and inclusiveness and our case is straightforward. Let me put it this way. Significant capital injection into IDA is crucial. The G20 Independent Expert Group recommends tripling IDA's financing capacity to US dollars to 79 billion by 2030, while maintaining the essential concessional nature of its financing. At the very least, and if we cannot do anything else, let us not ignore or wish away this expert advice. Africa's commitment to economic transformation, reducing poverty and inequality, and enhancing human well-being is essential and demands significant capital investment. Moreover, the global goal of achieving net zero by 2050 
cannot be realized without Africa's active participation, a failure which would jeopardize humanity's survival, not just African survival, humanity's survival. It is imperative to understand with substantial investment in our vast energy resources, Africa cannot only provide power to all its citizens, including the 600 million currently without access, but also significantly advance global decarbonization efforts. Let me say this uh, broadly. If there was a case to be made for a win-win outcome, Ida is the best example. Because everybody wins. The donors win, the recipients win. The donors win because they, it is an investment for them. For the recipients, it is an opportunity. In both cases, we have winners. The donors will put money in renewable energy, in energy in general, and we can continue world manufacturing and industrialization using African mineral resources, using energy that we have in abundance, and using labor that we have in abundance, and we can share the outcome of that industrialization with the rest of the world. Faced with a relentless challenge of climate change and escalating instability, our unity is our strength. Despite the myriad forces that threaten to divide us, we must remain focused on the ultimate goal, safeguarding the future of our civilization, the human race, and the diverse life forms that share our planet. Africa is eager to contribute to the solution. Our continent offers a viable and promising pathway to a future of prosperity for all humanity, harnessing our rich resources and innovative spirit. IDA's efficiency and effectiveness make it a unique force for good. Africa recognizes this and we don't take it for granted. We are setting an example with our ambitious plan for structural and systemic reforms underpinned by steadfast commitment to tangible results, transparency, and a robust partnership. Given the enormity of the challenge faced by African countries and its global implications as collective emergency, we call on our partners to meet us at this historic moment of solidarity and respond effectively by increasing their IDA contribution from the US dollars 93 billion raised in 2021 to at least US dollars 120 billion in 2024. We convene at a critical juncture facing a convergence of global crisis. This includes escalating geopolitical tensions that challenge international unity, a deepening development and debt crisis that threatens our economic stability, and urgent climate emergencies that demand immediate and collective action for our planet's survival. Today, we gather here, Kenya and the broader East Africa region faces severe flooding that devastated communities, destroyed infrastructure, and disrupted our economies. Concurrently, Southern Africa confronts intensifying drought, affecting nations like Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Just last year, the roles were reversed, highlighting our shared vulnerability to extreme weather patterns. As I speak to you in this podium, 10,000 people in Nairobi City are displaced by floods. That is the gravity of the situation. Only a year ago, we had a devastating drought on the other end. This new normal demands our immediate and united action to safeguard 
our collective future. IDA has directed 75% of its total commitments, nearly US dollars 26 billion, to our continent in the last fiscal year, with African nations comprising eight of IDA's top 10 borrowers. This support is not just financial, it is a lifeline for our development and also our stability. And your presence, personal presence, my friend Ajay Banga in this meeting is a demonstration of the centrality of the discussions that will happen in this meeting and your personal commitment to this continent, which we appreciate. IDA stands out for its rapid and decisive action during crisis, distinguishing itself from other funding sources. Its demand-driven programs, combined with concessional loans of 40 to 50 years, empower borrowing nations to pursue sustainable long-term development strategies. And this is what we have been asking for. Long-term, concessionary. We now want to discuss in this meeting scale. That is the only aspect that is missing in this configuration. And as IJ Banker said, two things are missing, scale and design. Make it simpler. It is an honor for Kenya to host this IDA replenishment conference at this historic venue, the place where African heads of state recently united with a bold vision. Here, we committed to transforming our continent into a thriving middle-income region, leveraging our unique potential to drive global solutions. Today, we build on that legacy by actualizing our potential to provide those solutions through necessary financing. I extend my deepest gratitude to each of you for joining us at this pivotal summit. Your presence not only honors us, but also reaffirms our shared commitment to the International Development Association, our cornerstone for achieving the development goals of our continent and beyond our continent. We as African heads of state and government commit to play our part by taking deliberate and robust actions to improve fiscal discipline, increase domestic revenue mobilization, develop investor-friendly policies, and enhance anti-corruption measures. IDA exemplifies the best of global cooperation, characterized by compassion, lasting dedication, and a fruitful collaboration. By fortifying IDA, we do more than just honor these values we significantly enhance our joint ability to tackle global challenges. Let us value and expand the reach and influence of this vital resource. Together, let us be bold, let us be ambitious, and let us act with conviction. Africa is poised to transform its agriculture, water security, and energy access while creating job opportunities for over 4 million youths entering the job market monthly and expanding our small and medium enterprises as well. Central to these opportunities is our commitment to African-led initiatives. We aim to control our destiny, managing our resources responsibly and sustainably to drive Africa's industrialization agenda using our abundant energy, mineral, and human capital resources. Our commitment to transparency and accountability is in our socioeconomic development plans, ensuring the efficient and effective use of IDA is central to our plan. We acknowledge the vital role of diverse stakeholders beyond governments and traditional donors committing to deeper and broader engagement to enrich our development outcomes. We are committed to empower the Africa Union Commission 
to make it fit for purpose with capacity to engage the rest of the world on behalf of Africa. We are committed to reform the Pan-African Parliament to enhance oversight and accountability over the Commission and establish an African Court of Justice so that we are ready to engage with the rest of the world. Africa does not need sustainable what? You could call it sustainable underdevelopment. Africa needs social economic transformation. The pregnancy must become a baby. The baby must grow and grow and become a teenager. The teenager must grow. That's what happens in life. You cannot have quantitative growth and you think you are doing anything. The main reason why there is no growth is because the growth factors are not funded. They are not even understood. What are the growth, growth factors? We now talk of private sector aid growth. Yes, but for the private sector to grow, what does it need? It needs low costs of production. Ministers of Finance, low costs of production. And what are the low costs of production? Number one, transport. You must have low transport costs. Where do low transport costs come from? From the railway. If you don't find the railway, how would you get low transport costs? Wonderful people. Banco Mundial, IMF, all of these. Where will low cost operation come from if you don't have a railway? We believe that it should be a collective effort to highlight both the impactful success stories of IDA and the potential that IDA still has. Indeed, IDA has great potential to help its recipients to leverage resources from other partners. For instance, in Tanzania, we have an infrastructure project in Dar es Salaam called the Simbazi Basin Development Project, which benefited from World Bank support worth $2 million. Having secured these resources, Tanzania has already been able to leverage an additional $60 million from other partners for this project, which aims at strengthening flooding of flood resilience and integrated urban development in our economic hub. Excellencies, in a bid to consolidate and building on the success or successes obtained during IDA 20, we are pleased to advance this most important dialogue on IDA 21. We are doing so at a time when Africa and the world are still facing the effects of multiple crises. In light of this crisis, coupled with significant shortfalls in development finance and shrinking fiscal space, what is required in going forward are more concessional resources. We have been hit by El Nino weather. That has forced me to declare a state of disaster in 23 out of 28 districts, making me the first president in Malawi's history to declare a state of disaster every year of his time in office thus far. And if hearing all this makes you feel like Malawi should not have survived such shocks, you're right. But I came here to tell you that Malawi is a miracle because despite the anguish Malawians have gone through and the pains they feel, Malawi has not only survived, 
but is in fact showing signs of recovery. And one of the secrets to our survival and recovery has been the World Bank's IDA, which I'll describe as Malawi's trusted and reliable ambulance in addressing the structural imbalances on the physical, current account, and monetary side occasioned by the shocks we have encountered. And like any good ambulance, IDA has saved Malawi from the brink by operating at two speeds simultaneously, the faster speed to immediately treat the collapsing organs of our ailing economy in real time whenever disaster strikes, using quick response instruments to mitigate the impacts of external shocks on the poorest and the slower speed to get the economy to the hospital for long-term treatment through structural reforms for sustainable and inclusive recovery. On the faster speed of immediate treatment inside the ambulance, IDA has swiftly provided Malawi support to respond to national, regional, and global emergencies affecting food security and balance of payments. For a peaceful continent, we must foster dialogue and reconciliation. In late 2021, Ethiopia formed the National Dialogue Commission to lead inclusive talks, independently tackling ongoing conflicts with wide public involvement. The Commission has thus far had consultative dialogue involving tens of thousands of stakeholders over two years. Regional dialogue are eminent, aiming to, to expand participation further. Third, like many AIDA countries, Ethiopia faces unemployment and a skill, a skill gap challenge, with the government prioritizing accessible education to empower citizens while encouraging youth engagement in startups across various fields. Investment in skills and education is central to Ethiopia's 10-year development plan, with a focus on sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism, expected to cover over 2 million new jobs. More than half of African countries are debt distressed. Ghana is currently going through the restructuring of her debts under the G20 Common Framework, which we all know is a slow process and needs to be stepped up. At the same time, we're suffering from the increasing effects of clim climate change and the devastations caused by COVID-19 and other adverse global developments. Doubling IDA to provide more concessional facilities to our countries is of utmost importance to help us cope with these challenges. The intersection between climate and debt makes imperative the need to reform the global financial architecture in a way that delivers more resources to our countries to help address the current poly crisis affecting our development and that of future generations. Essentially, in this age of increasing global uncertainty, socio-economic, political, and security risks like the Red Sea crisis, as well as the enormous development financing need, we must ensure IDA 21 becomes the main vehicle to support sustainable development without this almost all developing low income nations will struggle to deliver progressive changes from, from the offset. I wanted to thank the government and the, the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency President William Ruto for hosting this critical meeting on IDA 21, the and for 
bringing us all together. I also wanted to recognize the visionary leadership of His Excellency I.J. Bank, the president of the World Bank Group, who has demonstrated that he is firmly committed to leading a responsive bank that delivers results through the evolution roadmap. We are here united by a shared vision for the future of Africa, a continent that is rich in diversity, in culture, in potential. It is very easy to feel hopeful when we are together anywhere in Africa. You feel the sun in your face, the wind at your back, the fertile and mineral rich earth under your feet. And most importantly, you feel the infectious energy of young people. But these are the ingredients that can power the future. They are not new blessings. And over the course of history, this abundance has too often brought profiteering rather than prosperity. Today, we are focused on a brighter future for every country on the continent and the people who call it home. The International Development Association has been a steadfast partner in Africa's development journey. This summit symbolizes our objective commitment to accelerating progress. But we have to move with urgency, we have to move with purpose, and we have to have a focus on results and on impact. This will require more from IDA, it will require more from all parts of the World Bank Group, it will require more from governments, and it will require more from the private sector. We stand at the cusp of a new era of growth and prosperity for Africa, or we have come together merely to admire its potential. The choice of where to go with that is ours. IDA remains dedicated to supporting your efforts, to investing in the people of Africa. We are working to make IDA more efficient. We are working to make it able to deliver faster by cutting burdensome rules, requirements, and redundancies. We believe a simpler and reimagined IDA can be deployed with more focus to make meaningful impact to advance the fundamental needs, energy access, healthcare availability, realize the agricultural potential of this continent, and build out critical infrastructure and skills in its people. 